We're continuing our series about engines. Today we have the N20 engine. How could we not feature it? The most common issue here is the thermostat. Interestingly, one broke at 30,000 kilometers for one guy and for another at around 80,000. The alternator doesn't break, the air conditioning compressor doesn't break, and 245 horsepower is not weak at all. It's a pretty lively car, especially if it is a little bit chip-tuned, it will be 270 horsepower. Up Up Garage Racer BMW is such a car that if you don't know how to repair the engine, you don't even buy it, said one customer who does his own repairing. Anyway, we're continuing our series about engines. Today we showcase the N20 engine. It powers the F30, 320, 328, F10, 520, and 528 models. And there's X first, Series 1, Series 2. However, in most cases, there are around 30 F30 and 10 F10. There are versions of two and eight types and two and zero. The difference is 184 and 245 horsepower. Here we have a 328, which has 245 horsepower. The distinction lies in the compression ratio, impacting the engine's efficiency, boost level, and power output. The variation in piston numbers is the key difference between the 328 and the 320. We'll do another video sometime. Uh, there's a topic to discuss, but now we're just going to give an overview of the N20 engine, its strengths and weaknesses. We don't want this review to turn into the previous review of the N55, where I just criticized the engine because there are, well, there are different problems, issues, meaning serious breakdowns where the engine actually fails. But we haven't had any of those, just like for some unknown reason. And for the most part, customers drive, and everything is normal, nothing breaks down. From the main iron problems, it can be that the crankshaft jammed, but from what we saw, it was when the engine came to our BMW service with one liter of oil, or half a liter of oil, or two liters of oil, that is, it happened. The engine would then start humming and clunking, and there was also an engine of one American 328, which consumed almost a liter per 100 kilometers, or 200. That is, the gauge showed a low level all the time, but in fact, it was really low. So everyone thought that the gauge was glitchy, so anyway, the car was changing hands. Anyway, we're gonna talk about frequently encountered problems faced by F30 owners. Not the really rare ones. Well, we will touch on them, but don't think that it will be normal, that it happens all the time, but it's insane. For engine internals, similar to N55, sometimes the heat exchanger gaskets leak, but that's about 100,000 kilometers. It's usually changed in conjunction with the timing system, valve cover gaskets and oil pan gasket. The thing about this engine is that at 100,000 kilometers, it's highly recommended to change the timing chain. So it's a major component and the main maintenance work that goes into this engine. Clients have come to me at 110,000 kilometers of mileage when the plastic was already in the oil pan. Well, and the chain, of course, the phase is knocked down and the car would not start and would not go anywhere. And the plastic was clogging up the oil pan and the oil pressure would drop. All in all, it is very unhealthy to the engine. There are some videos of cars that have been running for like 130,000 or 150,000 kilometers and they haven't changed the timing chain. But there's so much slack in the chain. And most likely, if you remove the pan, there will be some plastic in the pan from the stabilizers, tensioners of the timing chain kit. That is, two problems are solved at once. This is the problem of leaking valve cover. The gasket is changed and the pallet is removed. The pallet gasket is changed. So when you replace the timing chain, it kills two more problems. Problems on the linkage on the iron. In addition, there are also variants that the valve cover is cracked. Oil starts to leak, so replacing the valve cover costs around $300, $350. With the replacement of the timing chain, as a rule, always changed. The oil pump chain. We always have both timing chain, oil pump chain, and gasket chain in stock, as is done frequently and regularly on different engines. This is typical what we do on this motor. We change the heat exchanger gaskets, we change the timing chain, we change the valve cover pan gaskets, we change the plugs. It's about 6,000 kilometers, 8,000 kilometers, something like 100,000 kilometers changes. Uh, it varies depending on how it turns out. Mostly these are cars coming from America. From 50,000 to 150,000 mileage and they change spark plugs all the time. Just to go through the points, 
as it was with the N55. There's engine internals first, then fuel, air, antifreeze. You get to the point, you can say the same thing about every component that it can break down. Let's say the fuel system, the fuel system. None of our clients have ever had injector issues. Now, there are two ways to approach this. We can tell you that sometimes they fail, which is just general information based on what we've seen somewhere at some point, etc. But it's highly unlikely that anyone will be personally affected, and we've never had it happen over there. Or we can talk about what we have personally encountered, let's say in the fuel system, injectors, HPFPs, and pumps have never broken down, never been changed, unlike the N55. Regarding issues with air mass, for example, turbo boost, the turbocharger, there's a Westgate problem. There's the Westgate flap. It, the bushing wears out and starts to dangle. Customers often come in with rattling sounds. They think it's the chain. We look. We take a gloved hand to the Westgate, check if the sounds disappeared or not. If they disappeared, it means that the bushing of the Westgate is worn out and requires restoration. That is, it is the removal of the turbine assembly and give it to the turbo service. Some turbo services know how to restore the Westgate bushing, some do not. Anyway, that's the kind of sore there is. It's on the air system. There could be air leaks on the valve cover. That's the PCV valve. That's what it could really be, where it's broken. It's either a separate valve cover or a valve cover assembly. The valve cover can burst, but that's rare. It was a customer of ours and they had to replace the valve cover assembly. There are usually no problems with the airflow meter, for example, or the turbo pressure regulator, so you don't have to worry about that. For the intake manifold airlines, and the intercooler and the intake manifold itself is not an issue, unlike, by the way, from N55, where charge pipe, this is the charge pipe before the intake, often breaks there, the plastic crumbles. Here, such problems have not yet been identified. As for the iron, let's talk about the Valvatronic. The Valvatronic system here is of the third generation. It breaks very rarely. That is, you should not count on it. It usually doesn't break down. Although I have a vid on YouTube of how I changed it. Question on the subject of ignition. Candles. The recommended mileage. F4 replacement plugs is 60,000 kilometers. Usually an American shop comes in and we recommend changing the plugs there. We changed them and forgot about them. And then again in 60,000 kilometers, the plugs are done. About coils. Usually coils don't break down, but uh, after 100,000 kilometers, some parts might start to fail. But don't count on it. Let's move on to the cooling system. The most common thing that breaks here is the thermostat. N20, we have it in stock. The cooling system is the component we change the most often. It rarely breaks, but it does occasionally. Next in replacement is the pump. It breaks very rarely. Costs a normal amount of money, about 100,000 kilometers, perhaps there will be a breakdown. And in reality, by the way, it broke down at 30,000 kilometers and the other at about 80,000 kilometers. Further on the cooling system, pipes, tank are reliable. The lid sometimes breaks. It is desirable to change it once every two years, roughly speaking. So just in case, so that the pressure is released. Next on the antifreeze system, radiators. There is a sandwich of radiators, a cooling radiator and an air conditioning radiator. There's also an intercooler underneath often clogged between the cooling radiator and air conditioner fluff. This causes the antifreeze to rise in temperature. Of antifreeze, increased antifreeze temperature, increased engine temperature. This worsens the rapid wear of rubber gaskets connection, valve cover, oil caps, oil pan gaskets, oil seals. Therefore, annual cleaning of the antifreeze radiator is highly recommended, preferably in the spring or summer. The intercooler can also be clogged. The intercooler affects the cooling of the air supplied to the engine intake. This results in a loss of power. So, if you want the car more likely without detonation, without power loss, you need to keep always clean the radiators of antifreeze. Also the intercooler, because that's very important, especially for uh, chipped cars. Let's talk about the applied equipment. The alternator doesn't break down. The air conditioning compressor doesn't break down. There's no power steering, it's electric. So there is no pump. There is an electric rake. There are issues with it, there are backlashes, there are internal errors on the unit, but it doesn't happen very often. There is also an alternator belt and tensioner. It is recommended to change them as a whole once in 100,000 kilometers. That is, there are no questions about the engine accessories. There is nothing to criticize about the engine accessories. Summarize on the engine. There are two major disadvantages. The first is that the chain must be replaced every 100,000 kilometers 
The second is that some people may find it underpowered relative to the N55. With 245 horsepower compared to 184 horsepower of the 320, one of the main advantages is that its engine accessories, electronic components, and units are generally reliable and do not break down. And because of that, as a consequence, the maintenance is inexpensive. N20 can be recommended to everyone. Those who are not after the high power of 400 plus horsepower, 245 horsepower, that's not that weak. You can make 290 horsepower on the chip tuning from Boot Mod 3. Relative, let's say, if you think about the old E46 330 model, formerly a top-of-the-line model, there was 231 horsepower there. This is 245. That's a pretty peppy car. Especially if you chip tuning Boot Mod 3 it up a bit, it's 290 horsepower. That is, it is recommended for purchase. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Make sure to click the notification bell so you won't miss our latest videos. And also do your BMW maintenance on time, I'm on it.